All right, what's up, guys? If you're watching on YouTube, I'm in my parents' basement. Come over here to watch uh, every Cup Series race, and it's my dad's birthday, so we're going out um, out to lunch or out to dinner with him after this. So different uh, different cast on the podcast, different background for me. Josh Betts is here with me. This is like episode 80-something presented by the Carl Auto Group. Uh, we appreciate them their partnership and uh i also wanted to give a uh, shout out to dan weldon uh died many years ago uh today one of my favorite indy car racers uh and october 16th i always think of him dude was uh dude was fantastic and gotta mention him so you ready to get into it josh yeah absolutely i uh, appreciate the invitation to come back on always happy to uh help pinch hit whenever i can and most importantly before we uh get into the discussion of the racing today happy birthday to your dad yeah of course um i'm not sure how old he's turning off <laughs> i'll ask him but i'll let him know you said that um all right so i think i got a lead with bubba wallace and kyle larson it, it was overwhelmingly the biggest story today and maybe one of the bigger ones of the playoffs and i hate it because it's two non-playoff guys that get into it and uh, take out a playoff guy number one uh, and also it overshadowed like the whole stage two. I almost felt like it was just being overshadowed by what happened in that sequence. And I thought the race overall, everything, you know, before, after that, that included, um, I thought it was a fantastic day of racing, but obviously, uh, was it, it was after the first stage, right? The, the, the Wallace Larson incident. Yeah. I think it was in the second stage. I believe so. I believe it was early in the second so, stage. Larson uh, was going for, he overdrove the corner, dive bombed a little too hard. Um, didn't necessarily get into Wallace. I think he, I think they might have touched, uh, but the air on his car forced Wallace is in the wall. Um, after Wallace bounces in the wall, goes right through the corner, quarter panel of Kyle Larson. Certainly could have came off as deliberate. Um, my first reaction to it was if you're going to take somebody out, the, the times I've seen drivers retaliate on purpose, there's like a certain way they go about it. And there's like a moment where you're like, okay, he's right next to him. Now he's going to turn him. I don't know if I've seen a driver go from the top of the racetrack on a straight B line to the guy's quarter panel. It was like, he led a NFL receiver getting chased down by a cornerback and he like had to take a line to him. That's like the only, and that was my first reaction. I was like, I don't think that was on purpose. And I had to watch it a few more times. Um, someone said on NBC, they had a thing that said his uh, throttle gauge was going up. So that would lead me to believe that he's driving to Larson. It, there's a lot of evidence that I've since read that it seems like it might have been on purpose. I'm not trying to come out and say either way. Um, but obviously, it looks really bad, and it's going to look bad for Bubba uh, if they review this, and, and that's what goes on with it. What were your first thoughts, Josh? I know you had some tweets about it. Well, if I'll, I'll get into my thoughts here on Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson incident here in a moment. But I want to go back to something you said a moment ago. Even the Wallace Larson incident aside, great race overall. You know, I was admittedly a little worried being back on a mile and a half. Is this going to be Texas all over again? And a couple of the, the other mile and a half where we've seen a, a, a crazy high amount of tire failures and, and tire failures that, you know, at Texas, among a couple other tracks, tires that would just that would just go flat with you know no apparent contact obviously there was a couple flat tires during the race today but from what i saw it looked like there was contact prior to a majority of those um, yeah either that or, or how long they stayed out on them and, and at this point we can all like i hope we can all agree on the tire thing it's because they're not running at the recommended air pressures now that's something that you have to develop in your tire and how you go about that and, and what Goodyear does and 
we've we've had that discussion 17 episodes ago right but um i i thought today there wasn't like it wasn't random it was okay that guy hadn't pit in a while that guy was driving like this you know that that seems like reasons for what the wrecks were well and i, I think the biggest thing with regard to the tires just one last thing on that and then i'll get then i can get into my thoughts if you want on the wallace larson yeah absolutely uh confrontation the the biggest difference to me today is in this race, unlike at Texas, unlike some of the other mile one halves, we had tire fall off. There was comers and goers, and that's been missing quite a bit to me on the mile and halves. Um, as as far as the Bubba Wallace Kyle Larson incident, with regard to Bubba Wallace getting into the wall, um, I'm with you. On that, from my standpoint, that was air on Larson's car that put him in the wall. Uh, I I do not think, based on what I saw, now, now that said, could Larson have given him more room? Absolutely. If if you want if you wanted to, he could have. Larson did not deliberately put Bubba Wallace into the wall. That was the air off the car. Right, right. It wasn't Larson wasn't trying to take anyone out. And Larson no. Larson didn't end Bubba's race with that, unless of course the steering did break. But we we don't know. NASCAR's investigating that part. Um obviously afterwards Bubba goes into Larson, then gets out of the car, walks over there and shoves him. I I thought it was funny that people started going after Bubba for bullying Kyle Larson. Every every other time that's happened in NASCAR, that's like, oh hell yeah, we got to fight. Let's go, let's go. Um, I, Larson knew he was mad. Larson understood that. I you know, I think I thought Bubba and Larson were a little closer than that. I thought Bubba probably would have said something to him and had a conversation first. But you know, I thought that part of it was exciting. If he takes out deliberately, that's a separate thing. I'll get to that, but I'll let you go. Well. Um... I, I was just going to mention, so like I mentioned, I don't believe Larson deliberately put Bubba Wallace in the wall. Right. I, right. I, I, I think we both agree that was air moving off Larson's car that caused that. Here's what I'll say as far as uh, Wallace hooking Larson in the right rear. We have multiple cup drivers, re cup regulars out of their cars right now due to concussion protocol, concussion issues. And even that aside, you should never use your car as a weapon and hook Kyle Larson, in this case, in the right rear at 180 miles an hour or whatever the speed was. That's not okay in my mind under any circumstances, in any situation at full speed, but especially not right now when you have Kurt Busch, who announced yesterday, yesterday retiring from full-time competition, a, a subsequent concussion, you know, led to obviously, as your listeners know, him missing a number of races. And then Alex Bowman uh, today was, well, I believe, his second or third race uh, that he missed after a wreck. At no point to me, is it okay to hook somebody in the right rear on a straightaway at 180? But right now, especially, with Kurt Busch and Alex Bowman out of their cars due to concussions. If you're NASCAR, I understand they have to look at it. I don't know how there's not at least a one race suspension for Bubba Wallace here, if not the rest of the year. Yeah. And I think, uh, let me, let me come out on this side. Cause a lot of people were accusing me of being a Bubba apologist. People know I'm a Bubba guy. I know I'm a Bubba guy. Don't hate the man. Um, think he gets a lot of unnecessary hate but if it comes out that this was deliberate he should at least have a race suspension that was uh precedented from the martinsville race the martinsville incident from a few years back like it's ridiculous to do it's a terrible move um but yeah i would not be surprised to see him park next week if that's what this investigation you know uncovers and all that and and i i think I think we will disagree on this next point um, that I'm going to say. You know, you, you make the choice to get out of your Wallace makes the choice 
to get out of his car and to go over and and have a conversation, for lack of a better word, with Larson. If that is all that it was, wanting to get his side of the story, I wouldn't have any issue with that. But, and, and to back up to something you said a moment ago, you're absolutely correct that Bubba Wallace gets a lot of unnecessary, unnecessary negativity directed towards him. You're 100% right, and I agree. But I, I didn't, I'll say this. I didn't love the shoving match necessarily. Um, obviously, emotion's part of the sport. I get it. But I don't, I didn't, I didn't love that coming from him. And perhaps part of my not liking it is let's be honest, whatever your thoughts are on, on Bubba Wallace for, for the segment of fans that doesn't particularly care for him or enjoy him. Does that showing match not give them more things to be negative towards him? Oh, you're saying, about? yeah, you're saying there that he's fueling the fire with that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It was a probably a dumb move to go and do that. Um, especially since Larson didn't fight back that, honestly made it worse for Bubba, right? Um, because you don't have the – a picture-perfect NHL fight, you can put that in every commercial for the next three months. I mean, NHL style, not actual hockey fight. Um, we've seen NASCAR promote races with the fights that go on, right? Um, so it would have been cool if that was the case, I guess. I'm half speaking tongue-in-cheek here. But yeah, uh, like him shoving and Larson not punching back at all, like it definitely made made it look worse on Bubba for the people that don't like him already. Well, and and let's and credit where due toward Kyle Larson as well here. Yeah, yeah, I think I think he knew that uh, he screwed up in his move. He said said as much in his post race interviews. Um, he he actually said that he doesn't think. NASCAR should penalize Bubba for retaliation specifically. But if they don't penalize Bubba, that's also just going to be a precedent that, hey, you didn't penalize him, so it's going to keep happening. That I'm paraphrasing that you can go, I don't know exactly who has that. I'll try to track it down. I'm going to try to put all this in the same story. But uh, that was after the race to either radio, TV, or the uh, media center. Probably media center from when I read that quote. And and there there was something similar, I think, that came out of his NBC interview um, outside the care center when Marty Snyder asked him uh, asked him a question that that Larson gave a similar answer to what you paraphrased paraphrased there. But if I can just expand on my point from a moment ago, real quick, of credit to Kyle Larson, we all know the the situation he was in a couple of years ago and the penalty that he paid with being out for a season. He, he made his mistake. He owned his mistake and I'm sure has gained a new segment of fans since his time at Hendrick Motorsports. And so Kyle Larson showed a lot of, mat of maturity there as well to, I, I mean, if if we all if we all were to ask ourselves, you're just saying you're just saying like generally speaking over the past two years, like Larson looked really mature today, and probably yeah. a lot more mature than he was two years ago. I agree. Yeah, yeah. If 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 if, if this is 2020, he probably shoves him back. Um, uh, mate, I don't know. Larson's not like the biggest guy. I don't think no. he. I don't think he wants to fight a lot of people. <laughs> and I'm no. not. I'm not trying to speak for Kyle or anything like. No. I love Kyle. But but here's what I would say. What you mentioned about when Larson said in his interview that it sets a precedent if you don't penalize Bubba Wallace. Absolutely. If 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 there is no penalty here, if there is no minimum of a one race suspension here, all NASCAR will then do if there if there is no suspension here. It's gonna look like you're, you're treating Bubba like the favorite. 
But so this is, I think we should, with it, I think you and I should both preface like this is if, and I, I would say this, if NASCAR can't provide evidence that the steering broke, then it should be a one race penalty at least. Well, I mean, like I mean, if you don't penalize him and you don't put evidence out there, that's like, look, here's the steering wheel broken. NBC showed the telemetry with the video on the broadcast, as I'm sure you saw. I did. So I didn't see that live. I was watching the okay. screen at the time and I, I did not see that pop up and I haven't seen a replay of it on social media anywhere. I looked for it for a little bit, but eventually the race started and I went back. And So, so NBC showed Bubba's telemetry with the video. Not only did I not see any lift in Bubba's throttle over the course of that event, he actually stayed in the gas as, as, as far as, as far as when he got in the right in Larson's right rear quarter panel. Yeah. And I, I have no clue if that was coming out of the wall or, you know, you don't want to lose spots. So that and this is the so the potential situation, right, is that he hits the wall, the steering brakes, and he's trying not to lose spots. So then he's on the gas trying to go down the straightaway. The car hooks wherever, straight well, left straight into the quarter panel. But in that like second and a half, you know, how how long does it take you to realize that your car's broken and how long is the buffer point between the two so obviously if it's on purpose he just went into him and did it on purpose but it it certainly looks more intentional than it does, it does, it does. I, I would lean i would lean that it was intentional with everything that we have right now i'm, I'm the only way that it's not intentional basically is if nascar comes out and shows a video they have an in-car camera of a steering wheel i would assume that camera shows that bubba is turning left into him and that's why it hasn't been posted anywhere well and you know i you mentioned the in-car camera but also the 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 smt data should give some sort of an indication toward a potential broken part um broken steering um i i would i would assume nascar would consult that as well overall i'm just worried about if there's no penalty that that's a that's a dangerous pandora's box and a slippery slope here if there's no if there's no penalty and the only the only reason it feels like that is because nascar has screwed the pooch on what two penalty controversies in the past month oh he's if not more but yeah. yeah it's it's overshadowed every week um so you know, make the easy call or come out with the evidence to show why you're not making that call. Um, those are the two choices right now. And, you know, one, I think we all probably think is more likely than the other. Um, I, you know, I just, I'm hesitant to say like 100% either way, because if you're wrong, you look pretty stupid. So. Well, um, I'm just throwing out my opinion. Um, that may be proven wrong as no, you're no, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying at you. I'm talking. I, about no, 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 no. I, I know. I know. Yeah. I, I, I understand that you are taking a, a measured approach until you hear more. And I, I certainly, I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, um, I mean, I want people to know, like I'm a Bubba guy, but I don't think you should be able to go wreck someone on purpose. So. Oh, no. I, and, and can we, can we just clearly, uh, I'll just give my opinion here and say this. To me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's Bubba Wallace or any other driver in this field. Any driver that hooks another competitor in the right rear quarter panel at full speed, that, you, you, that, that, can't, that cannot happen. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, and just another one, I've got one more quick thought on this, if, if I can, Connor. You're good. Um, certainly, Bubba Wallace has gained some fans here, especially over the last year plus as he's run more competitively and things of that nature. And I mentioned earlier how this incident, this incident may give more fuel to the fans that don't particularly care for Bubba for whatever reason that might be. 
Um, but I do wonder, and I do wonder about even the diehard Bubba Wallace fans. How many of those fans, at minimum, lost some respect for him today yeah, and, and with this I'm, incident? I'm not sure about that. Uh, from one perspective, uh, one of my buddies, I you know what? I'm not I'm not going to tell that. He went private on Twitter, but. I'm not going to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You're fine. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Uh, And I think drivers make mistakes. Ty Gibbs has taken people out on purpose. We, you know, we saw with Noah Gregson uh, and Sage Karam. I forget what road course that was at in the Xfinity series. Uh, We've seen this before. We, people cheered when Kenseth did it to Logano. Well, and Martinsville, it's different circumstances. Everything about it is different. Right. Yeah, um, but no, like blatantly hugging a guy on a straightaway like that is like that's what I mean when I say like don't wreck someone in person. Wrecking someone, yeah, yes. wrecking someone out, oh, yeah. I guess, or a different way to use that phrase. I guess I don't know. Um, there's different things about. It. I loved when Kenseth did that to Logano. I thought that was comical. Some people thought it made NASCAR look cheap. Uh, everyone has their opinions on stuff, but well, think, well, but you you mentioned the Kenseth Logano incident. As we know, speeds at Martinsville, speeds at Las Vegas, as you said. Yeah, right. They're much different. The the impact, to to use that example, the impact of a driver going into the wall at Martinsville at, well, what's um, in a corner 60, 70 miles an hour, probably thereabouts, 60 or 70 miles an hour on a short track, getting sent into the wall in a corner, 180 at Las Vegas in a straightaway. Certainly two different things. Uh, the, the thing for me here, Connor, that differentiates this one is the hooking of Kyle Larson in the right rear quarter panel on a straightaway mm-hmm. at full speed. Yeah. That's, that's the difference for me as far as why I really don't like this one as opposed to, to your point, one driver getting the bumper put to them by another in turn four at Martinsville. Yeah. They're different. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to the other two things we're uh, going to cover real quick here uh, and get you guys moving. We're going to have another episode uh, that we record on Monday. Uh, I think Damon might be on, Chris might be on. Um, we'll let you know about that tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Well, depending on when you're listening to this, this one will be out early. So, uh Joey Logano, speaking of, 2018 champion, moves on, clinches his ticket to the championship four, uh, passes Ross Chastain in the closing laps. I thought that finish kicked ass. Uh, There's nothing manufactured about it. Um, And Joey Logano ends up uh, beating Chastain on fresher tires. And I enjoyed it. I think Logano deserved to win that one too. Great race, great finish, great run for Ross Chastain as well. Um, Obviously, you mentioned the fresher tires for a Logano. That's what won Logano this race, um, in my mind. Um, faster car, fresher tires. Um, and one thing, just to go back real quick, that that I don't believe either of us mentioned in our discussion of the Bubba Wallace Kyle Larson incident. That incident takes out Christopher Bell, who I have not seen points following the race. And he's not. Nice but- 19 let me double check here i have it uh 23 okay so maybe not quite a win in your end situation quite yet but no but this round is kind of known for that you know you have the most in most years it's the top eight drivers this year i would say top five are in that group maybe not eight but it's usually a win in your end because the playoff teams are they have so much more to fight for and they're on top of their games at the right moment and they're going to spend more money than everyone else um, to get their car to go faster. So in my opinion, um, you, usually this round though, there's one spot available on points. So you got to be pretty high up to go and get that. But 23, not horrifically out of it you know you want to go race for stage points now and see if you can do that but you're going to race for the one you're in either way well and and christopher bell can win at homestead next week 
Yeah, um, no, no reason he can't win. I, that. I said he was one of my favorites to clinch a spot. I think me and Dame. I don't think me and Damon either of us even picked Logano, so we're already zero for one on that. Uh, and then a stat from the NBC broadcast today: the winner of the Las Vegas race has gone on to win the championship three of the last six years. And and so and one was Larson. I think one was Truex. I could be wrong there. I could be screwing this up too. But you know, obviously, obviously, as we know, Joey Logano is the one who's comfortable the next two weeks. And so, if you're Logano and crew chief Paul Wolf, do you, you know, maybe you go experiment with a setup at Miami in in practice? Yeah, and I, I don't know. I don't know how much Miami. Miami can translate to Phoenix or what they're going to end up doing. I, they'll probably True. they'll probably race it like everyone else does and try to win some more. But uh yeah, if I was playing a video game, <laughs> I'd be running around in the back in 40th, <laughs> just cruising. But uh yeah, Music strong, strong day for Chastain finishing second. Um I, I know he's a popular pick to I, I would I would look to Ross Chastain as maybe that driver who advances on points. I thought uh, for been... a second, for a second, I thought it was going to be really fitting that we had a potentially deliberate uh, accident take out one playoff driver and Ross Chastain wins in the same race. I would, I would have laughed at the irony behind that. Uh, you, you, you would find that ironic. I, Every, I think all, all the I regular think listeners right. know. All the regular listeners know what I think of Ross Chastain, not as a person. Because his, as much as they hammer in the dang story to every week on TV, did you know he was a watermelon farmer? By the way, uh, I did. Uh, I will say this: if he makes, if he makes the, if he makes the championship four, it would be fitting to hoist the trophy and then smash the watermelon with the trophy. No, after, oh, okay, after. <laughs> After the presentation of the trophy, I thought I thought you were I thought you were saying smash the watermelon with the trophy, which I would be I'd be a huge fan of. Show how uh, horrible that trophy is. But by the way, when you were talking, when you were when you were giving the analogy regarding NHL fights uh, earlier, when, when we were discussing the Bubba Wallace Kyle Larson situation, for a moment there, I thought you were going to. Uh, Mention our mutual hockey team who's two and zero at the moment. Big big stars guy. They're going eighty two and zero, dude. The refs the refs are on a tirade in NASCAR. Both both there in the NHL, college football, NFL too. It's ridiculous. Pavs had a goal Saturday night. They took it off the board. They said they were offsides. Well, well, he got one in the season opener on Thursday. So that I was, was told I was told blatantly offsides from my buddy. I texted so, but. Uh, just to, to look ahead to the rest of the round of eight here, um, I don't know that Damon has asked you for your picks for the championship four, but my updated I, picks. Do you, are you but, but, what we're doing? Uh, yeah, but if if I can ask a question to you, yeah, uh, what, what what do you think the final four looks like for Phoenix? Uh, I think Chase Elliott finds a way to get in there. Um, I guess I would then be predicting. I think Bell is too good right now to not get in, but I don't know how that's going to happen. So maybe Bell wins next week. Elliot wins the week after. I think those three get in and then, huh? I just want to make sure I'm not. Blaney's 11 out now and Hamlin's six up. So I think that, I think Hamlin will have it on uh Blaney, 11 points separating them. I think whoever gets better between those two. But that's – I'm just sticking with my gut on, you know, this is what I thought was going to happen today. Kind of shift stuff for me. Chase was – they missed the setup today. I don't know oh, what the strategy was. Someone was like, he's doing a good job just, you know, being out there and avoiding this stuff. And I'm like, he's not, he's not out there, man. He's in like 22nd. He's in 18th. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I – you know, they had been so good leading up to really, they had been relatively consistent all year. I don't know how you miss a setup, like you said, that much to be stuck in 20th 
you know, for a good chunk of the race and in the middle of stage two. Yeah, that was uh, Elliot haters that want to pretend like he's not a talented race car driver. Uh, you know, they're going to they're going to tell you like, oh, well, he he doesn't know how to drive like that. How, why are you blaming on the setup? Like, no, he's proven himself quite a few times, in my opinion. Um, so when he's running like that today, I, I was shocked how far off the pace they were. Yeah, that was very strange and where is where does chase sit in points right now he is 17 up on the cutoff uh his big lead is uh pretty well famished vamoose yeah because he's behind chastain now by a point yeah because he came in 30 some points i think ahead of logano i mean Uh that there was a i think it was 30 on the cutoff or something like that i don't think it was ahead of logano i think he was like 20 up on logano 40, okay. 40 something on the cutoff, if I remember right. But, you know, but 20, 20 points up on your, on Logano, who is in second coming in and close to 40 on the cut line. And then all of a sudden now, um, 11 or 13 points to the good. Yeah. Significant, significant points hit and sets up. Uh, a, a need for a couple of clean runs uh, at Miami next week. And we know, we know Martinsville is a wild card race. Um, is, it the, is it, you know, are uh, we going to uh, see the same uh, Martinsville we saw? Are we going to see desperation moves and, and wrecking people like we used to see at Martins? Not, I don't want to say that like it's deliberately wrecking people, but like taking people out late in the race to win at Martinsville well, is something that happens time and time again in the past, but with how these cars shift and how they race at Martinsville, a lot of people are concerned that we might not see uh, a great race there. Um, Ben Kennedy was on Dale Jr.'s podcast uh, this week. I listened to it on the way back from I-80 last night. Um, And he mentioned that, you know, do the temperatures affect it? And I think NASCAR is hoping that the cold temperatures really affected it. I know the cold temperatures affected me this week and I was very cold, but. Well, and you, you bring up a good point there of, what Martinsville do we see? If we see the Martinsville from the spring, you know, then then I'm a little concerned there. Well, then uh, then any crew chief that doesn't pick track position, <laughs> I'm just gonna rip true. I'm just gonna true. rip them all over Twitter because the last time we watched that race, and I you know I was watching it with Damon over Twitter and over a stream on my phone, and in between heat races, we'd be watching everything that's going on and. I was telling him, like, what crew chief right now is telling their guy to come into the pits? Why? What is the benefit of fresher tires? No one's passing anybody. It was a parade. Well, and, uh, yeah, and certainly I I don't imagine NASCAR wants a repeat of that, although we've seen what this next-gen car looks like on short tracks. It hasn't been great, as we know. That's an understatement, Josh. Well, it, it is, and, and, and that's fair. Um, but perhaps perhaps they can figure something out if they haven't already um, by the time we get to Martinsville. But uh, And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, watching that race with you here in a couple of weeks. That should be, uh, should be entertaining. Absolutely. Um, all right, real quick before I go, because I think my grandparents uh, just got here. Um, Went to I-80 last night, got home at like 2.30, 3 a.m. It was fun. Um, I never want to cover a race like that again. It honestly sucked. And it wasn't, it didn't suck because the race was bad. It didn't suck because I hated the track. It sucked because every other person around me was like, not every single person, but like one out of every three people were like tearing up watching hot laps. And then they did the four wide uh, at the start of the final, final race, 53 laps. And in just every caution, you look around and people are tearing up. Every lap that clicks off, people are starting to cry. And, you know, talking to Joe Kosicki after the race, who's owned that track for 19 years, uh, he was like, I'll, I'll talk to you about the race. I don't want to talk about the track because I'll start to cry. And, you know, it just sucked because you, you're losing a, what I would compare it to, and this is, probably why Chris loves that track so much. Um, that was as grassroots of a track I've ever been to that hosts a big event. I mean, it, it 
was like a backyard Saturday night ho hum track. You know, there was there's stuff that makes it unique. There's some pretty cool. They have like life size replicas of all the cars characters sitting right outside the track. So I love that. Um, but so it, it has the unique stuff. It stands hold like 5,000, 5,500 people or something like that. There's one grandstand section. There's like one small stand on the other side for people that are outside the track in the pits for specifically for big events like the silver dollar nationals and um the crowd for the world of allies showed out and the atmosphere was great but you know it, it was your typical regular racetrack um that you would go to and watch saturday night local shows and i just thought it was super cool that they hosted such a big event for so long and um sucks to see it go Yeah, no, certainly. Anytime, anytime you talk about losing a track, especially one that's been around as long as that has, um, n- never, never a fun thing to see for someone like myself who enjoys dirt track racing. Um, I don't, I don't probably go watch enough of it um, over the course uh, of a year. Um, but uh, thanks to a trip to Knoxville with you, Connor, uh, earlier this year. Um, I, I'm looking forward to hopefully attending more dirt track races in the future. Cause I, I do enjoy it. Um, but yeah, just from, uh, and again, just outstanding coverage by you all weekend, uh, from out there. Thanks Josh. Um, Appreciate it. Interviews were great as always. And, and while I'm sure it's sad for you to see, I would imagine, I would imagine perhaps, and maybe maybe you're not feeling this right now, but I would imagine as you get a little past covering this event, I hope that's something you'll look back on and say, Oh, it was pretty cool to cover the last race there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that, that was the reason that I went and uh, stayed there for the weekend and didn't go down to lakeside with the outlaws and um, just wanted to talk to people around there and, and get a grasp for it. Cause that was my first trip there ever. Um, I had some stuff going on silver dollar nationals weekend this year that I couldn't make it down there. I, I forget what the thing was, but I couldn't get down there, uh, for the whole weekend. So I didn't end up going. Um, but yeah, it, it is, uh, I'm definitely going to look back on it and be like, yeah, that was one of those. That's like, thank God I, I went to that one. Yeah, definitely. All right. You good. You get everything in you wanted to. I, I think so. I don't believe I forgot anything. Just, uh, grateful for the, uh, I'm grateful that you asked me to join you. And like I said, uh, like I said at the, at the top, uh, always happy to help out however I can, pal. You know that. Of course, Josh pinch hits like he's Kyle Schwarber in the Cubs World Series run, okay? Does a fantastic job every time. Appreciate you uh, for coming on, Josh. Guys, we'll be back Monday. We're going to record another episode. Um, hopefully, we'll get Chris on uh, and we'll talk to Damon and stuff. I want to ruffle Damon's feathers about Larson. I'm going to, I hope he doesn't have time to listen to this and I'm going to come on. Like I, I was just completely against Larson. All right, Josh, you got, you good. Uh, yeah, yep. We're, we're good. Good here, sir. Again, I uh, appreciate the invitation. All right. Nope. Nobody get on Twitter and warn Damon what I'm doing. Okay. That'll be fun. I'll, I'll lead with that. It'll be a, a great time as long as we can get them. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it. And, uh, Thanks to the Carl Auto Group. Guys, if you uh, want to show uh, your support for us, uh, we, we tag them in the tweet for the podcast. Tweet them and thank them uh, for sponsoring us and uh, believing in what we do here. I hope we make a difference. I hope we're, you know, years down the line, we're making a big enough difference to uh, prevent tracks like I-80 uh, from closing and maybe helping, you know, big time buyers get interested in the sport and uh, buy that track and save it, right? So that's obviously... Uh, pretty unique goal i guess and probably not a very feasible one but you know you gotta think a little bigger sometimes and and we're thinking as big as it gets especially for 2023 so we'll be around all off season hope you guys enjoy uh let us know what you think of the podcast and all that and uh, thank you so much for listening to this one appreciate y'all